Hi everybody. The wild truth in the Indian market and for that matter any market in the world is that whenever the godfather speaks those that listen to him prosper and those who don't they simply perish. In this case the godfather of our market is none other than the government of India. And every time the budget releases or whenever the government makes a grand announcement there is always a set of companies whose stock prices go up and certain companies whose stock prices go down. You don't believe me? Take the example of ethanol blending. As soon as the announcement of ethanol blending was done, the sugar stocks shot up. Why? Because ethanol is made out of rice, corn, wheat and sugarcane. And India has a surplus of sugarcane which was to be used for ethanol. So you know what? The sugar stocks started rising up whereby they shot up by 14% in just 2 weeks. While Ugar Sugar Works went up from 87 rupees to 100 rupees, Dalmia Bharat Sugar went up from 332 rupees to 446 rupees, and Balram Puri Chini Mills went up from 365 to 370 rupees. Similarly, when the government announced huge capital expenditure into roads, the cement stocks of India saw a rally. In fact, in the past 5 years, the cement stocks of India have seen an extraordinary return due to the most ambitious highway projects in India. Building on the massive tripling of the capital expenditure outlay in the past 4 years, resulting in huge multiplier impact on economic growth and employment creation, the outlay for the next year is being increased by 11 Point one percent to eleven lakh eleven thousand one hundred and eleven crore rupees. FY twenty four for cement has been very good with almost sixteen percent growth. Stocks like India Cements, ACC, uh, even uh, Grassim, for example, these are the ones that are really moving up sharply. This is the reason why every time the budget or the PM makes an announcement, the investors watch it very very carefully so that they can pick the best stocks in the market. And you know what guys on 1st of February 2024 one such announcement was made by the Prime Minister of India and this again points towards a huge opportunity in the solar sector of India this announcement was about something called the rooftop solar scheme ab bijli ka bill bhi zero karne ke liye hum aage bad rahe hain solar panels to be installed in 1 crore houses this year budget mein सरकार ने रूपटॉप सोलर की बहुत बड़ी योजना का ऐलान किया है एक करोड़ परिवारों को सोलर रूपटॉप लगाने के लिए सरकार मदद करेगी द गवर्नमेंट वुड प्रोवाइड फ्री इलेक्ट्रिसिटी टू वन करोड़ हाउस होल्ड इन इंडिया हु ऑप्ट टू इंस्टॉल सोलर पैनल्स ऑन देयर रूपटॉप्स एंड नॉट सो सरप्राइजिंगली वारी रिन्यूएबल्स अडानी ग्रीन एनर्जी एंड इंसुलेशन एनर्जी सॉ राइज इन देयर प्राइसेस This is absolutely insane isn't it but you know what guys when the execution of this project happens with 10 million panel installations india will see a huge surge in demand for solar modules solar panels solar glass wires inverters and even polysilicon so if you understand this industry in depth you can use the knowledge from this case study to both invest or start a business in the solar industry of india so if you want to be a sharp investor or an entrepreneur let's deep dive and try to understand What is this solar gold mine all about? What exactly is the rooftop solar scheme? What is the value chain of rooftop solar? Which Indian companies could benefit from the scheme and most importantly, how can you find a golden opportunity in this space? Chalo, let's start from the basics and understand what exactly is rooftop solar. Rooftop solar is nothing but the installation of solar panels on your rooftop and once installed the generation of solar energy is done at no cost at all and since india is in the tropical belt we get so much sunlight that even poor households in india can use solar energy to fulfill their energy requirements this is the reason why the prime minister launched something called the pm suryodaya yojana pradhan mantri modi ne aaj pradhan mantri suryodaya yojana ka elan kiya hai रूपटॉप सोलर की बहुत बड़ी योजना का ऐलान किया है वेर इन द गवर्नमेंट इज एसेंशियली प्रोवाइडिंग ओवर थर्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज इन सब्सिडीज टू दो इंस्टॉल सोलर पैनल ओवर वन किलोवट आवर एंड वन किलोवट आवर कैपेसिटी नीड्स अराउंड थ्री टू फोर सोलर पैनल्स एंड फॉर वन करोर पोअरेस्ट फैमिलीज हुआ इंस्टॉलिंग दी सोलर रूफटॉप द गवर्नमेंट इज इवन गिविंग अवे थ्री हंड्रेड यूनिट्स ऑफ फ्री इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एवरी सिंगल मंथ This is the reason why it is expected to boost the demand of solar panels by a large large extent. But this begs the question in a country where most people earn less than 30000 rupees a month 
how does installing a solar panel worth 1.8 lakh rupees make any sense at all well let's do the math and understand this better a typical indian household usually requires around 350 units as in 350 kilowatt hour per month and the average power tariff is around 6.5 rupees per kilowatt hour so this way the electricity bill turns out to be 2275 rupees per month and 27300 rupees per year now a 3 kilowatt solar panel costs an average of around 1.8 lakh rupees but if you look at the government subsidy the government has offered only 30000 rupees per kilowatt hour up to 2 kilowatt hour and 18000 rupees for the third kilowatt so if my household is using 3 kilowatt hour i would get a subsidy of 78000 rupees in total so the average cost of panel installation is 1.8 lakh rupees minus 78000 rupees equal to 1 lakh 2000 rupees but along with that you would also need an inverter worth 50000 rupees and miscellaneous cost in installation of around 20000 rupees so the total budget needed for this would be 1.72 lakh rupees including the subsidy so if your power bill is 27300 rupees and your solar panel costs 1 lakh 72000 rupees then it would take you 6.3 years just to break even But the best part is that the life of a solar panel is over 25 years and most companies will give you 25 years warranty as well. That means after 6 years you could get 18.7 years of free electricity. On top of that with the scheme you can even sell electricity that you do not need at all and this is something known as net metering. So if your electricity is connected to a grid the extra electricity goes back into the power grid which gives you credit and eventually cuts down on your regular electricity bills. Now the primary question over here is which Indian companies are going to benefit from the scheme? Well firstly if you look at this number 1.8 lakh rupees is a huge amount for most Indian households and here if a financier like Bajaj Finance steps in and gives them an offer to pay EMIs in 4 to 5 years then the adoption will happen much faster and both solar panel companies as well as finance companies like Bajaj Finance will benefit. So here's where there's a huge demand in selling solar panels, selling financing services and also insurance services because people will be skeptical to install solar panels because 6.3 years to break even is a big big time span. This is the first segment of opportunities for both investors as well as entrepreneurs. And this brings us to the second segment and here's where we need to go deep inside the solar panel so that we can understand what are the opportunities in the materials needed for the solar panel. You see the most fundamental element used in solar panels is polysilicon which is essentially a processed version of silicon. And silicon is so so crazy that it is super efficient in capturing the sunlight and it is so efficient that even after 25 years it can work at 80% efficiency. and it is so cheap that it is 1000 times cheaper than its competitors like gallium arsenide so just like lithium is for ev oil is for ic engines and silicon is for solar panels and you know what silicon is the second most abundant material on earth so the question is if silicon is available in large quantities and we have maximum sunlight then problem solved right india can export energy with solar and we could become the richest country in the world right Well not really because even if silicon is available in large quantities it does not mean every country has the manufacturing capacity to process it and turn it into solar cells in fact since 2021 you would be shocked to know that 2/3 of india's solar cell manufacturing came from imports so the question is who controls the solar value chain and what are india's strengths and how do we as entrepreneurs tap into this opportunity Well the answer to this starts with silica. So let's understand the value chain of silica. Silica makes up almost 60% of earth's crust and it is present in 95% of the rocks. So the first step is mining silica. Then the next step is processing it using coke and purifying it with oxygen to create 97 to 99% pure silicon. This process requires a ton of electrical energy. Then in the next step it is purified to 99.99% by making it react with hydrogen chloride heating and distilling it and finally you will have polysilicon which is the fundamental material in the solar cell manufacturing then the next step is melting this polysilicon and converting it into large cylindrical blocks called ingots these ingots are then turned into thin disks called silicon wafers and these wafers are then further processed to turn them into solar cells and finally these cells when assembled together and framed they make up a solar panel and this solar panel is then installed in our houses and industries this is the process of going from silica to a solar panel if this is clear to you let's understand the major countries and the geopolitics involved in this process 
Let's start with Silica. Silica is mined in more than 60 countries and as of 2018, the world's largest producers were United States, Netherlands, Spain and Oman. But you know what guys, when it comes to processing Silica to turn it into silicon, this chart suddenly looks very very different. And surprisingly, only one country leads the chart with 69% market share. Which country is this? It is none other than China. And China is so far ahead that out of 9 million tons of silicon produced in the world in 2023, 6.6 .6 million tons were only produced in China. And then the second largest producer was Russia at 620,000 metric tons. And if you look at India, we only produced 60,000 tons of silicon. So we are 100 times behind China. And because China leads with silicon, it also leads with polysilicon. And the scary fact is that 75% of the world's entire polysilicon in 2020 was only produced in China. So we have a very huge dependency on China. And here's where some people might come up and say, bro, so what? We can control the rest of the value chain, right? Well, unfortunately, from ingots to wafers to solar cells and even modules, China controls more than 80% of this entire value chain. So this begs the question, where does India stand? Well, you would be shocked to know that India imported 100% of its wafers in 2021 from China only, whereas our own production of polysilicon ingots and wafers was virtually zero. So the point to be noted over here is that whichever company manages to produce polysilicon, ingots or wafers for India, that company will have the support from the Indian government because this is a gold mine for us as a country. So if you're an entrepreneur or an investor, here's a big, big opportunity for you. But the agitating question over here is, what on earth are we going to do with all this sunlight when we can't produce the most fundamental material needed to make solar panels? Well, this is where the Adanis have stepped in by starting a polysilicon factory in Gujarat in December 2022. On top of that, they've launched India's first solar ingot producing plant in 2022. And by 2025, the Adanis intend to achieve 2 gigawatt capacity with their plant. Secondly, when it comes to cells and panels, India is doing much better. India's solar cell production capacity is around 6 gigawatt per year. And when we dug deeper, we couldn't find the biggest manufacturers in this space at all. So either this space is completely untapped or the players are completely undiscovered. So if you know of any such companies, please drop them in the comments below. Now, what's fascinating is that India's export of solar cells have increased from $108 million from January to August 2022 to $1.3 billion in the same period in 2023. So that is a 12 times increase in just one year. So this begs the question, how is our exports rising so fast if China is still the key player in this space? Well, as it turns out, the biggest reason is China's mistreatment and forced labor practices on the Uyghur Muslim community. And we all know what's happening to them in China. On the streets of Xinjiang, there is still a tension and signs of what this place has been through. Heavy police, regular stops, a sense they're always watching. It is now infamous for its brutal oppression of the Muslim Uyghur minority. A huge cache of data hacked from Chinese police computer servers has revealed new evidence on how China has treated imprisoned Uyghur Muslims in the country's Xinjiang region. So because of this, the US suddenly stopped importing from China and started importing from India. And as of December 2023, the United States alone, I repeat, the United States alone accounted for 98.5% of the total exports of solar cells. Which means, here again, we have a huge export opportunity because the United States is buying from us. Similarly, even the Indian government has announced import duties of 25% on these cells. This means the government itself is purposefully making it easier for the Indian businesses to survive in this space. So this points towards a huge business and investment opportunity in India, right? The answer is yes and no. Yes, you all know why. No, because even with the custom tax, the imported Chinese modules still remain a little bit cheaper than the Indian products. So what do we need to do? We need to achieve economies of scale with this demand from the US so that we can quickly drop our prices by 25 to 30 percent so that we can compete with China for our exports after the subsidy is removed. So if you're an investor who's going to invest in this space, do compare the cost of manufacturing of your portfolio companies with the Chinese cost and that too without subsidy because that is where the real moat of the company lies. But as of now, the moral of the story is that China is still leading this space. 
and this brings us to the final stage which is modules or solar panels and here's where you would be delighted to know that india's module production capacity has grown from 15 gigawatt hour to 38 gigawatt hour in just three years and furthermore it is expected to almost triple to 110 gigawatt hour by 2026 and not just production even india's exports of modules has jumped exponentially by 364 percent in fy23 itself so 364 percent again points towards a huge opportunity in the solar module space for people like you and here's where we have the biggest players in the space who are adani solar axi tech energy mv photovoltaic and many more as mentioned in this table so do study these companies so that you can find opportunities both as investors as well as entrepreneurs so with all the government advantage and the dire need for solar panels all the entities in the supply chain will benefit if they beat china or they help india beat china by catalyzing the manufacturing in india so if you look at the state of the solar industry of india here's where we need to truly be atmanirbhar and whichever company enables india to become atmanirbhar that company will go on to benefit because the godfather will help these companies out now i don't know if you realize this guys but then the Tatas and the Adanis are now beneficiaries of the government wave because they're helping India become Atmanirbhar. So tomorrow if Tata Solar or Adani Solar goes on to become a listed company and goes on to see extraordinary rise in their stock prices, you should not be surprised because both these companies eventually, if successful, are helping India recover from a dire situation whereby we are dependent on a rival for an important element of our industry and our progress. Apart from this, there's a long list of entities that I'll share in the description so that you can study these companies and understand their businesses both as investors and as students of business. So this brings us to the last question. With all this drama, what are the most important takeaways that you guys are supposed to take away both as investors and as entrepreneurs of India? Number one, the government is and will always remain the godfather of the market. So if you want to progress, listen to the godfather. Lesson number two, India is in a dire need and is far, far behind in terms of polysilicon, wafer and ingot production. So no matter how small or big you are, the force of the government will support you to become a giant player. So do look into the space both as investors and as entrepreneurs with utmost interest. Number three, the solar cell export market of India is booming right now. And this time we have the unique advantage of achieving economies of scale so that we can drop our prices by 25 to 30% and then compete with the Chinese prices. And during this sweet time, if we end up achieving economies of scale, if we end up dropping our prices, then we would open up a huge export potential all across the world. So as an investor, you can go bullish on these companies and help these companies become a beneficiary in this space. And last and most obviously, do keep an eye on the solar and solar value chain stocks. This was the complete overview of the ripple effect and the opportunities in the solar space due to the implementation of the PM Suryodaya Yojana. That's all from my side for today guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>